Hello Internet. This is a Philips 3575 uh, DVD recorder. It has a hard drive in it and I'm going to be removing that hard drive so that I can show you how to extract the recordings from the hard drive and to a PC. Be right back. Okay, so what we've done is we've removed the screws from the sides up front and from the back here. And we just have to take the bonnet off. So we just pull back, lift up. It's usually not very easy. You have to uh, get it to let go of the lip of the plastic front, but you don't want to break anything, so you have to be careful. And you just tug a little bit, pull a little bit, and lift up, and eventually it'll come off. Once you've had it off a few times like I have, then it's easy to remove. Okay, this is the hard drive, and we've got the encoder board, and we've got this parallel cable that's actually attached to the IDE connector. Okay, to get the IDE connector off, you're going to have to remove uh, some glue right here from the top of the hard drive. And basically, uh, you just use something, usually not something made of metal, but something of wood or plastic to just edge that glue loose until it comes loose. And once it comes loose, it's so old it stays where it's at. It's not very messy. Next, I'm going to use something like this, which has got a wide flat edge. I wish I had a popsicle stick, but this is what I have. And the recorder is disconnected. It's powered off. so. There's no shock hazard. So basically I get that wedged in between there. There's a generous gap right there, so it goes in easily. And just twist it a little bit to sort of wedge it out a little bit at a time. Okay, comes right off. Then we want to be careful that this doesn't get snagged on anything. Okay, see it's got that little flat panel connector. You have to be careful because if that comes loose, then you'll have to put it back in and it can be harder for some of us older people who can't quite see all the contact pins and get it positioned properly. But basically you have to get it put back in and that little edge right there against the circuit board, that tells you about where it should be positioned. You don't want to go too deep and you don't want to go too far out. And then this little plastic piece right here, the little trap door, it usually pops open if this cable comes out. You want to fold it back in to hold it. It holds it snug. Generally, you don't want to mess with disconnecting these flat panel cables if you can possibly do that. Because like I say, they're very hard to put back in properly and you don't want to risk damaging uh, the recorder's electronics. So basically, once you got it loose like that, you want to fold it over. And if I had some insulating material to protect that, I would go ahead and do that. But uh, I've been kind of loose and goose with it. So uh, then we have a Molex connector right here and we have to get that loose. I can do it by finger. It's harder the first time, but you might want to use some uh, long nose pliers or something, but it gets easier after it's been out a few times, so put that aside. And then there are three screws. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. So we have to remove those. It'd be kind of nice if I had a motorized screwdriver to remove them, but I'm pretty low tech. There we go, just three screws. And then you just carefully lift the front up, the back out, and then you just lift it out like that. And there we go, we've got the hard drive. We're ready to attach it to a PC that's got an IDE connector. You don't wanna mess with the jumpers. Uh, they determine whether it's master, slave, or cable select. And sometimes whether it's a 4096K, uh, excuse me, 4096 byte per sector or 512. All of these are 512s. So you want to make sure not to mess with these jumpers and accidentally set them up for something that they don't understand. There we go. Okay, welcome to the inside of my PC once again. Again, I've got a modular power supply that has some extra long cables, makes it easy to connect the Molex connectors, the power supplies. Uh, we've got an IDE connector. I like to use these, uh, these rounded cables because they just make it easier to move them around as, big, as opposed to the big parallel cables. So, I'm going to plug this in. Again, it's got an idiot-proof notch so that you can't plug it in incorrectly, but you can plug it in incorrectly side to side. So you want to get that notch centered right on that, that gap that's built into the hard drive to make sure that it's centered. Then you just push it in. Okay. Then we attach power, and we're ready to go. Now, there is this USB fan, AC Infinity, that I got off uh, Amazon and uh, basically it blows air up underneath the, the hard drive to keep it cool. 
And usually I get a portable fan and like aim it right here so that it cools off the motherboard and the rest of the electronics. Although the CPU has got its own fan, so it's well protected. And then this uh, great big 120 millimeter fan uh, generally pulls air through here. But you don't want to run it that way too long. But this, this is going to take a really, it won't take very long at all. Basically, Isobuster reads the drive and it understands the drive structure and it understands the recording structure. So it spends a minimal amount of time getting exactly what you want. Of course, if you're going to copy everything off the drive, that's going to take a lot of time. But if you can select and target specific recordings that you're interested in, you only have to spend the time it takes to read the sectors for those recordings. You don't have to scan the entire drive and that's one of its really big saving uh, graces. So basically we power it up and I'll see you on the desktop. Okay, welcome to the desktop. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to start up ISOBuster. It's going to scan the PC for any attached hard drives and it's going to try to focus on the one with the most unusual uh, file system first. If it doesn't select the correct uh, hard drive then you can use this drop down here to select the correct hard drive. This is the one from the Philips 3575. Okay, it's going to break it down into a file system and within that file system there are a number of files in VR format and then it's going to list the recordings underneath that in a subdirectory called recordings these are the original titles of the recordings as originally made on the DVD recorder in order to ex um, extract one you just pick it and you right click and you say extract you do have an alternative to extract and apply a filter that only pulls out the MPEG frames for some playback um, that's a little bit more stable if you just want to get everything, then you just uh, tell it where you want to put it. Save. And it extracts that recording. And that's basically it. So now you can close uh, Isobuster. And there's your recording. You can go ahead and go back to uh, your hard drive and put it back into the DVD recorder and it works just fine. is the playback. Thanks for your attention.